What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Laura Brannigan. And I'd like to start by giving a major shout out to not only friend and champion of the channel, Scott, but friend Scott, which is to say, uh, Scott was out this way for business recently, and I was able to meet up with him for a bit. So we got to chat, uh, and he actually shared some more music with me, a few CDs, including some artists that are of significance, uh, culturally speaking, but which I have not reacted to at all. So I'll be uh, mum about that in terms of the identity of these artists. Uh, but once again, big shout out to Scott, not only for um, supporting the channel in different ways, not only for being super positive and patient when it comes to reactions to Laura and now to some other um, artists that we'll begin to go through soon. Um, but yeah, just a really cool thing that he not only was willing to meet up, but that he sort of went out of his way to do it. And, you know, I'm very busy on the weekend, so um, that was super cool. Uh, looking forward to talking many more tunes over uh, many more months and beyond. So big shout out to you. And the next tune we're going to listen to from Laura is one I unintentionally skipped over on the compilation, which was sort of funny and, as uh, Scott put it, a happy accident. Uh, because it's one of his faves from Laura, and he was saying um, that it's one of those tunes where you can read between the lines. The lyrics are saying one thing, but perhaps the narrator, narrator is a bit unreliable. And I was saying I really enjoy tunes like that because um, it's this sort of uh, more, uh, let's say, nuanced style of songwriting where the lyrics, the words themselves, the semantic meaning of the lines suggests one thing, but the subtext, the emotion, the atmosphere tells a different story, or at least a more complicated story. And I actually didn't mention this at the time, but I have commented on one or two other, or in one or two other reactions about this, but it made me think about not only the line from Shakespeare, Merchant of Venice, the me thinks the lady doth protest too much, but it also makes me think that, you know, in history, as I technically am a historian, you start looking at primary sources, and if one, uh, if an author in a given, um, historical context is saying this thing never happens and anyone who says it happens is insane because we all know it doesn't happen it never should happen if you see that you begin to say hmm perhaps there's more to the story because if something was really never happening and no one ever saw it there's no real need to talk about it you don't need to convince anybody that it's not happening it's you know it's not happening so it's not likely a large subject of conversation but if someone is adamant that it's not happening and there's really angrily uh, denouncing any suggestion that it might be happening, it might make you take a closer look because because perhaps it's not so much that it isn't happening, they just despise it and wish that it wasn't. Um, so that type of thing, when you see it in a, a primary source document, um, you know, if you're um, a, an inquiring historian, it should likely make you take a closer look and check out other primary sources at the time. So um, I do, again, enjoy when what you're being told uh, differentiates or rather diverges from what is actually at hand. So let's hear how Laura deals with this. This is Laura Brannigan. The track is Over You uh, and it's included on the Best of Brannigan Greatest Hits compilation.
It's, you know, it's a song for anyone who's ever been brokenhearted, but, you know, people are human and you still want to have your sense of, you know, pride and the idea that, you know, sure, like, I was brokenhearted, but this time I'm really finally over you. Indeed, like, the way it starts, right, the, the experiences referenced are highly specific, the way that you know, the knock of a door. It definitely doesn't make me wonder, just for a fleeting moment, it doesn't make my heart jump that maybe it's you who's come back. It definitely, you know, isn't what happens. Um, so we get these very specific um, scenarios which suggest that that's exactly what happens, you know, when she hears a knock on the door and so on. Um, and then she's basically saying that, you know, now I'm fine, like this time, which suggests that there's been other times where she's tried to get to this point and she hasn't really. And she's like, you know, I'm so busy. I don't even have time to think about you. But of course, we're hearing her, you know, ruminate about the relationship and about the, the absence of the other person. And so we hear that it was he, you know, who said to her, I'm over you. And that was the end of it. And so now she's trying to convince him and herself really that she has gotten to that same but I'm over you just like you know you said it to me um, and I'm not concerned about what you're doing and I'm not thinking 
um, that you're coming back and, you know, you better not be thinking I still love you because nothing could be further from the truth. So again, it's everything that Scott was saying, but what I didn't, you know, I, you can hear the words, it's, you know, the emotion of the tune will, you know, suggest that she still feels, um, more strongly than she'd like to admit. And then it's like, you hear it and you, you feel that emotion. Um, so again, as someone who has felt brokenhearted in my life and like, oh man, like, you know, I, I just got to stop thinking about this and whatever. But then in the quiet moments, it comes back. But you try to almost like convincing yourself of a mantra. Like, no, you know, this is how I feel about this. This is how I feel about this. This is how I feel about this. And I'm definitely not thinking about it too much. Because, you know, if I did that, it might suggest that I'm still in love with this person. But I'm definitely not. So, um, again, it's a song that I can sympathize with. And I think um, is very cleverly and powerfully articulated. And once again, her vocals, like... When she wants to, she can just go to this crazy level of intensity, um, and the rasp, like the, 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 what's the right word? I feel like the, the scratch might be too strong of a word, but she can really, like, have a roughness to her voice that I enjoy. So, um, yeah, a really cool and powerful tune. I absolutely understand why this would be, um, a significant track. You know, there's some artists that I've listened to for a very long time where, you know, if I'm feeling, like, upset about something or sad, I, there's sort of, like, go-to songs where you can, like, just sort of embrace the feeling and try to work through it, or at the very least, you know, just have cathartically, you know, work through it. Um, I feel like this is a song that you can add to that type of um, arsenal when it comes to songs that can, you know, help you deal with that sort of feeling, or at least, again, um, just face it head on. So, um, again, shout out to Laura, shout out to Scott. Really do appreciate you. Uh, let me know what you think of this one. I will see you next time. Peace.